And the next subject matter that I want to chit-chat about for a few minutes is FOG. For those of you who are not familiar with this acronym, it stands for Fat Oil and Greases. It also stands for the typical weather in England. As, uh, as you look out the window out here and see the, uh, the wonderful weather that we've got here today. Anyway, fog is a, is a um, I can call it really a disruptor in the food service industry. And it's becoming more and more of a disruptor um, all the time. And why isn't this moving? Let's go to this one here. It's more becoming more of a disruptor all the time, and so where is it a problem? Why is it having issues? Why is it? Are there issues associated with it? And some of the things that are that you would normally think of when you think of fog or fat, soil, and greases, uh, things like block drains and block sewers. And I'm going to get into some uh, interesting statistics here shortly. Uh, internal and external property and sewer flooding can cause all sorts of problems: odor or smell, whatever nomenclature you want to use. Vermin in an in insect infestation as well. All of these things are associated with fog. And uh, that's why it's extremely important from an operator perspective that we, they find ways, we find ways to control <laughs> fog in the, everything okay? Yeah, yeah. That, we that we control frog, fog, I should say, as much as we absolutely possibly can. Well, some very interesting statistics associated with fog. A few years back, Two very prestigious universities in the United States did a study on fog. And um, they were done independently of each other, and they came up with some very, very interesting statistics. One of them is that at, at, at QSR, fast food restaurants, 93% of all the fog that is generated at a fast food restaurant enters the sewage or waste water system through the three compartment sink. Okay, huge, huge percentage, 93% enters through the three compartment sink. Then they, in the continuation of the study, that full service restaurants, they found that 75% of fog enters the sewage system through the three compartment sink, and an additional 15% entered through the pre-rinse pre sink that is found at the dishwashing machine. So that is the normal, when you take a look at these percentages, over 90% in, in both cases um, are entered through one piece of equipment, the three compartments say, or two pieces are in the uh, full service restaurant, not only through their three compartment thing, sink, but the, also the rink, rinse sink that you find at the at the dishwasher. So a huge percentage, yeah. I'm not asking a tough question, but what's the three compartment sink? Yeah, it's usually referred to as the pot wash area. Pot wash. Cool. They're normally three compartments. Right? At least I think they are. Yeah, my so, is usually is yeah. that not yeah. pre sink fifteen percent? Yeah. Pre-rinse sink. So a pre-rinse sink is different than a three-compartment sink. Okay. Anyone not familiar with the term three-compartment uh, sink? The rest of you are. <laughs> anyway, so whatever your no, whatever nomenclature you use, it's a tremendous amount of uh, of fog that enters into the sewage system through that particular piece of equipment. Again, what nom every nomenclature you want to use. As part of that same study, they found that the average restaurant produces seven, over 7,000 kilograms of fog on an annual basis. Now, granted, this study was done in the United States, and granted that the United States, the average size of a restaurant there is a little bit larger than the average size of a restaurant here in the UK. But still, it, I can guarantee, even if it was half the size, and it's not, it's a tremendous amount of fats, oil, and greases that are entering into the sewage system um, in virtually every type of restaurant that exists out there. So we need to, as much as we absolutely possibly can, control it. Uh, the end user operator needs to control it to avoid a lot of the problems that we have. Uncontrolled discharge of fog could contravene the Section 111 of the Water Industry Act. Uh, and some of the statistics I found when looking at this act that there are 366,000 sewage blockages a year in the UK alone. 70% of them are caused by fog and um, it costs a minimum of 80 million pounds a year just to clear the blockages, <coughs> excuse me, in these sewage systems. So it's, it's, it's obviously it's a tremendous amount of money that is being spent to unblock these, uh, um, uh, the, the blockages that are occurring in the sewage systems and various sources of uh, a part of the, of the sewage disposal system process. Under the, uh, there are various regulations 
government regulations and in industry regulations that regulate the, the fog out there. You've got the Water uh, Industry Act of 1991. You've got the Environmental Protection Act that was uh, put in place around 1990. You have the food hygiene regulations that are in place. And the last one, the various building standards and regulations that exist here in the UK and other parts of the world as well that are designed to regulate fog as much as they absolutely possibly can. So, some of the fog wars are generated by a whole plethora of different pieces of equipment that, it, that exist out there. We've got combi oven steamers that produce fog. We've got rotisserie ovens that produce a tremendous amount of fog. It's, it's amazing the amount of fat that is produced from rotisserie, uh, out of rotisserie uh, ovens, I should say, primarily because of the primary piece of of food that is used, that are, or cooked, I should say, in rotisserie ovens. And that primary piece of food is what? Chickens. Chickens, exactly, that have a huge, huge fat content. So it's important that you capture that fog as much as you possibly can. Uh, various kettles that exist out there, obviously if they're producing product that is very, very high in fats, oil and greases, and then the various wok stations. A wok station that you'd find in a oriental restaurant or Chinese restaurant produces an unbelievable amount of fog, both vegetable based as well as animal based. And uh, again, it's very, very important that we control it. Other ways that are uh, where fog is generated, mentioned before, the dishwashing sinks and the, in, in the uh, dishwashing systems. The uh, macerators or food waste disposal units is another source of fog. Uh, beverage equipment where significant amounts of dairy products are are uh, sent or, or allowed to go down the drain, like an ice cream stand, for example. It's a, a tremendous amount of fog. It can go down the drain through an ice cream stand. Um, anywhere where dairy is present is another, obviously another source. Source, pardon me, generated by steamers. Fryers is a very, very big uh, area if you don't dispose of the oil properly. I've seen food service operators who literally just allow the, uh, the used fryer oil or grease to literally just go down the drain, absolutely just allow it to go down the drain. What an, uh, that, that is totally in, environmentally irresponsible to do something like that. From uh, tilting <coughs> skillets or tilting brat pans, dishwashers and pot washing machines, they are, <coughs> excuse me, again, other sources of, of sink, or not sink, but of fog. Food prep sinks, floor gullies um, that collects the residue from the various other pieces of equipment that I just mentioned. And I, going back to that story that I told you about the, uh, the um, uh, floors and the poor, poor angles, that's a, that is a, what I'm really talking about here. The floor gullies are not designed properly to uh, uh, accommodate the, the over, not the overflow, but the flow from those particular, particular pieces of equipment. Ventilation systems that have water wash syst uh, systems built into them. That's another source of fog within the uh, food service industry. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. Well, how do you reduce fog? A lot of different ways of doing it, and I'm just gonna touch on three or four of the different ways to do it, some of the advantages and disadvantages, or some of the operating principles of them. Because in this, again, this is a subject matter that <coughs> is, there are a lot of people working on it, and, and uh, in fact, I know one individual right here in this country, you may know him as well, that is, he just received his PhD studying fog within, specifically within the food service industry. So it's a very, very, can be a very, very complex, uh, uh, right? pardon me? I'll tell you later, okay. Anyway, um, so how do you get rid of fog? What are some of the ways to deal with fog? Well, you've got grease separators or grease traps. You have grease removal units or GRUs. Uh, we have biological ba and bacteria-based dousing systems. These are three of the more common ways to deal with the problem of fog within the uh, food service industry. And I'm just going to take a couple of minutes and chit chat about each one of them. Uh, fog or grease separators, um, it's just the very first one that I've got here in the picture over there on the right hand side. They're very, basically very, very passive in nature, meaning that they are not actively removing fats, oil and greases from water or from whatever the source. It's a very, very passive in nature. They work by slowing down the flow of water that is coming out of a, a piece of food service equipment that is generating the, this fog to begin with. And uh, over a period of time, it slows down this water and the air flows down the flow, I should say. And the grease is allowed to rise to the surface and then you have to, have to manually remove that grease. Um, the, the vast point that I got up here, the volume of the grease separator and the flow rate determine how efficient and how effective 
these particular units are. The problem with them, and there's problems and advantages and disadvantages with the various pieces of equipment, uh, these types of equipment that exist out there. One of the problems that I've seen is that the operator does not, on a regular basis, go to one of these units and look to see how, how much grease is in it. And they start to overflow. And they start <coughs> to overflow. And then they start to overflow. Big problem, isn't it? Okay. And it can literally close down a restaurant. I remember a couple of years ago, uh, anyone heard of the athlete basketball player called Michael Jordan? Okay. Very, very famous athlete. He has a, uh, res a restaurant that bears his name on it in Grand Central Station in, in New York City. All right. And it's a very, very popular restaurant there for a lot of different reasons. But they had an overflow of grease, fat, soil, and greases there. They were using a grease separator just like this, or similar to it in nature. <coughs> And they did not properly maintain it. They didn't, on a regular basis, take the, the fat, soil, and greases out of the unit and dispose of them properly. So one day it started to overflow, and it just kept constantly overflowing. So much so that two or three sets of tracks of trains that were going into Grand Central Station had to be closed down because this fog got out into the actual platform of the train station. Not only did they close down the restaurant for well over a month to get it totally cleaned out, but also closed down two or three tracks, railway track lines, that trains couldn't come in or couldn't depart from anymore. Already caused a massive problem. Okay, And if any of you have ever been to New York City and been to Grand Central Station before, you know it's a very, very busy uh, railway station. Trains are constantly going in and out and in and out. Most of them are commuter trains, so it really significantly adversely affect the flow of commuters uh, coming into New York City from the various suburbs. So that's just one example of a, of a, a real, really bad story of not controlling fog properly and not cleaning it out if you just are using a grease separator. Um, you're all familiar with this. Fog is retained within the unit through a series of baffles and needs to be cleaned out on a very, very regular basis. Again, going back to that story that I just mentioned to you about uh, Michael Jordan's restaurant in New York City. The next piece of equipment is called a grease removal unit or a grease removal device, whatever nomenclature you want to use. Uh, these are active in nature versus the previous one that I just talked about was very passive in nature. An active one means that you are constantly removing fat, soil, and greases basically automatically from the, from the water system or from where it's being discharged, automatically removing it and, and the, this, uh, the fog goes into its own separate container. So they're active, they're self-emptying grease separator, and to the, they become most effective when you install one of these units at the source of where the grease enters the system itself. And based upon what I said a few moments ago, what is the primary source of fat, soil, and greases entering into the water system? Where is it? Three compartment sink. Three compartment sink, okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> any good operator or seller of these particular pieces of equipment would locate them as close as possible to the actual uh, source of that fat, soil, and greases, which are, based upon the studies that were done in the United States um, by two very, very prominent universities, that um, uh, they, you, you install it very, very close to the three compartment sink. Um, other things, oil is separated from the water and discharged into a separate container. Um, oil containers are relatively small and as such need to be emptied on a regular basis. This is probably one of the uh, inherent weaknesses of one of these particular units by certain manufacturers, though there's a way of getting around that. And um, one of the ways of getting around it is to have a very, very large container remote from the actual <coughs> unit itself. So I've seen units where uh, very, very large stores where they have their they're processing these uh, rotisserie chickens on a regular basis and they're just creating just a tremendous amount of fat, soil, and greases where the, the, uh, the effluent would go through a unit like this, but instead of having a container like you see over here that's collecting the fat, soil, and greases, it's pumped to a huge, huge container someplace remote from the actual kitchen itself already. So that, that in turn creates a, can create some few problems, but it also means that the operator, the employees of the operation do not have to be constantly going back to one of these units and, and emptying the, the uh, fog container on a regular basis. Of course, the other 
factor associated with that is the, t the, the menu within your restaurant. If, you're, if you have a, a menu that has a tremendous amount of fats, oil, and greases uh, in the actual menu itself, then you're going to have a, a greater accumulation of fats, oil, and greases within a relatively short period of time. And that's, <coughs> excuse me, that's when you, you as an operator need to be constantly looking to see how much of this fog is actually accumulating in one of these containers. Then you also have biological dosing systems, or bioremediation is the use of, of microorganisms to biologically break down fog in the drainage system. Di dosing is, is accomplished with a direct connection to the kitchen wastewater uh, system itself, and it should be located as close as you absolutely possibly can to the axe, to a passive grease interceptor, or even a, a, uh, an active grease uh, interceptor or fog interceptor. They, I've seen a lot of places that are, that are using both an active and a passive grease separator along with uh, the biological dosing system as well. So using them in tandem, tandem pardon me, to try to get as much effluent out of the, uh, out of the system or out of the, uh, uh, the drainage system as you absolutely possibly can. So that is a very, very effective way of doing it as well. Again, there's no one simple solution, no one simple solution associated with it. Uh, it's a, there's a series of different solutions. Then you have your typical, um, oh, come on, a grease trap, the in-ground grease traps that have been around uh, forever and ever, and they're okay as well, but they don't, they haven't proven to be as efficient as some of the uh, efficient at removing fats, oil, and greases as some of the other systems that I've just mentioned here. So, that's a little story about fats, oil, and greases. It's something that, as I said at the outset of this particular chapter, that is gaining a lot more momentum with respect to the end user operator, uh, because the fines are starting to go up. I don't know what they're like here in, in the UK with respect to fines, but I know in other parts of the world, the fine levels can be absolutely tremendously high and in some cases literally render um, a food service operator uh, with, with nothing left over except a, a messy kitchen going out of business because they can't afford to uh, pay the fines. Pardon me? Get jail time in the U.S. Oh, is that right? In about six months of yeah. no action. In the U.S. or the U.K.? In the U.S. Yeah, yes, okay, I thought you said the U.K. No, but three years ahead of everyone Yeah. So, I mean, that's the severity of the, uh, of the punishment, that you can literally get jail time uh, in certain parts of the world if you don't comply with the local regulations that uh, uh, apply to fog, okay?